Now this was okay for 2022, but I think for 2023 we need something a bit jazzier. It's my beard gone. Welcome to Hobby with Ollie and the new Hobby Room setup. Today we're going to talk through seven ways that I'm going to be trying to help myself paint more minis in this space and hopefully some that you can apply to your setups too. Up first is one of those self-improvement tips that shows up everywhere, the 20 second rule. If you haven't come across this before, the basic principle is this. You want to make it 20 seconds easier for you to do the things you want to do and 20 seconds harder to do the things that you want not to do. Thinking about it, that's probably why you hide the biscuits, isn't it, Meg? I hope he doesn't manage to find them here. Let's look at an example of the 20 second rule in action, using an example from our hobby. Let's say the behavior I want to promote is painting up a Space Marine aggressor. In my previous solution, he was stored in a pile of Tupperware. I knew roughly where he was, but I had to shift and move a variety of boxes in order to get to him. And then I had to go through the Tupperware to make sure I could find him. This meant that while I could overcome my laziness and go and paint him at any point, I never did. Now, there are numerous ways to apply the 20 second rule to this situation, but the one I've opted for is to have a set of drawers which are labeled so I know exactly what is in each drawer. This way, if I've decided I'm going to paint an aggressor today, I open up my Blood Angels drawer and there he is ready to go. The 20 second rule is the reason why it's important to have a tidy hobby space as well as the 20 seconds you have to spend clearing off your desk might be enough to put you off actually starting painting that army that you've been putting off for ages. The other great thing about this is that it adapts really well to any situation. So give it a try and make it 20 seconds easier for you to paint your minis in 2023. Also, let me know what you try and how it goes in the comments down below. Next up is an interesting one. The difference between dedicated and casual hobby time. Now, unlike the 20 second rule, which I think works for just about anyone, this is more of a unique balance for each different hobbyist. The key is to look at what works for you and try to promote that. For me, I like to set aside dedicated hobby time for painting. This means I have a couple of hours where I will do nothing but sit and paint, put on my headphones and really get lost in the process. If like me, you also benefit from dedicated hobby time, here's a couple of tips to get the most out of it. Firstly, know your end conditions. Have to pick up the kids in an hour and a half? Set an alarm so that you can fully immerse yourself in hobbying. This way you won't constantly be looking at your watch, phone, or feeling any sense of anxiety about upcoming events. Speaking of phones, I find it easiest to put on a playlist of songs and then put the phone aside. Your friends, family, and the rest of your life will still be there once you're done with your dedicated hobby time. And if anyone really needs you, they can still call you. Just be clear with people exactly what you need during your dedicated hobby time, and most people are pretty understanding. Now, while I get most of my actual projects done during dedicated hobby time, there are some things that I reserve for casual hobbying. For building in particular, this is something Meg and I like to do while snuggled up in bed watching a film, which can lead to some awkward moments. Ah, shit. Next up is to always plan out what you want to get done. Speaking of which, this is the section of the video where I have said I need you to click subscribe and to click the like button if you're enjoying the video so far. It isn't glamorous, but having a solid plan for what you want to get done is beneficial for productivity. There are plenty of other guides on actually planning from other people much better qualified than myself, as this is one of those things that I really need to work on. There is an interesting debate that often comes up when discussing this topic. I can't plan when I'm going to feel creative, I just need to feel inspired. While there is some truth to inspiration striking at inopportune moments, it is still possible to have creative freedom while also having a plan. One thing I'm going to be trying to incorporate into my routine this year is dedicated time for experimentation on new techniques. Unless you are already a Golden Demon winner, there is still plenty of groundwork that you can put in before you start thinking about needing to be divinely inspired before starting your next paint job. We live in an amazing time with all kinds of creative folks putting out amazing stuff, so explore around and try out some new techniques. Maybe you'll find some that really suit your style, and maybe you won't. But so long as you've got that time for experimentation, you're going to have a positive learning experience. Now, while we're talking about learning from other creators, it's important to be realistic in your expectations. Watching one video and painting one mini probably isn't enough to master the technique. So absorb as much information as you can and apply what you can. Always bear in mind that some people have spent their entire lives dedicated to the craft of miniature painting. 
You're not going to become an Angel Geraldes overnight. It is so easy with readily available social media to forget the hundreds of hours on individual paint jobs and the years and years of practice that have gone into making some of the masterpieces that we can see online. We're all at our own place in miniature painting, whether it's the first step or a lifetime of experience. So travel along at your own pace and enjoy the journey. Now this one probably isn't something that veteran hobbyists need reminding of. Sure, I play Warhammer 40k, but this really cool thing just came out, so maybe I'll pick up a box. Sound familiar? It's also important to mix things up every once in a while. For an example, last year one of my most successful videos was painting the entirety of the Tyranids Combat Patrol box in a single week. I really enjoyed this process. I had a great time deciding on the paint scheme, and I managed to work out lots of neat little efficiencies which will make it much easier for me painting Tyranids in the future. But what was the very last thing that I wanted to do as soon as I'd finished filming that video? Paint Tyranids. Now this does depend on your situation as I'll discuss in my next point, but in principle, mixing it up every once in a while really helps to get your creative juices flowing. If you only ever paint the same thing in the same way over and over again, you're missing out on the entire breadth of our hobby apart from that very, very tiny piece. Now in addition to this, I recommend being experimental with these interim projects. Use some resin for your bases, try out a jazzy new colour scheme that you wouldn't put anywhere else, or mix it up and try something like underpainting. If it doesn't work, it's no big deal. If it does, you've got a brand new tool for your hobby toolbox. We all have different priorities when it comes to our hobby time. Some of you may only have a couple of hours a week that you can use for hobbying, whether it's for relaxation or for getting something ready for your next game day. Now I mentioned this in the previous point, if you are being paid to paint your miniatures, you are going to be put on another timeline. That's unavoidable. Make sure again that you're only taking on projects that are within the scope of what you can accomplish. Regardless of what your hobby time available is, it's important to prioritise what is important to you in the hobby. For me, I want to paint as many of my models as possible, while also making entertaining videos for all of you on YouTube. It's a balancing act. I want to improve my skills, but I also want to cut through my backlog of models. So reflect on what's important to you in this hobby. And maybe 2023 is the year that you finally learn wet blending, improve your basing techniques, or just get your whole army ready for a scrap. Now this is number seven on the list, but number one in terms of most important. Why would you get into miniature painting if you didn't find it fun? Now that isn't to say that every single moment that you're sat at your painting desk is going to make you ecstatically happy. I like to think about fun in two different types. Type 1 fun is easy to enjoy and feels great instantly, though it tends to wear off very, very quickly. This is things like playing video games or eating biscuits. Oh yes! Biscuits! Painting miniatures, on the other hand, falls very firmly into the camp of Type 2 fun. Type 2 fun requires effort and time to achieve, but it leaves you with a greater feeling of satisfaction for longer once complete. Painting the edge highlights is all worth it when you take a step back and look at the model that you've just created. Once you can get into the habit of enjoying Type 2 fun, it becomes so much easier to get things done, whether that's tasks around the house or achieving your hobby goals. So there you have it, that's seven ways that I'm going to be trying to motivate myself to paint more and more effectively this year. Which of these did you find helpful? Which of these do you already apply to your hobby space? Let me know in those comments below. I hope I've given you some helpful tips to get motivated in 2023. In the meantime, my name has been Ollie. this has been my hobby, and I'll see you next time.